And joining us here today is Mikolai Raczynski, Porter's Chief Investment Officer. Hello and welcome to TVP World. Hello, good morning. Thanks for having me. So in a recent poll, it seems like the support and the lack of support for Mr. Glapinski in Poland is divided roughly by half. About 40% say he was guilty of these allegations. Uh, another 40% seem to be defending him. So it seems to run along political lines. But let's actually get into the meat of it, the economic basis of what's going on. Would you say that these allegations are actually substantiated when it comes to the economic impact of what these decisions actually were? Well, actually what the central bank did in the past couple of years, there are allegations that it was some kind of political involvement and it might have influenced the inflation on margin, so spurring higher inflation expectations uh, in the public. It, it could hurt the, the economic environment in Poland, but it's unclear and hard to prove how much those uh, those things, those operations actually influence that. We all know that uh, inflation uh, was a global thing, uh, supply and demand issue. So it will be hard for the new uh, political uh, government, for the political parties to try to prove most of those allegations. But obviously some of them, they might try to, uh, to show that the, the central bank had uh, was in some part at least involved in the political dynamics in Poland. All right, like uh, my colleague here just mentioned, the polling when it comes to support of, of uh, this case does seem to look like it's breaking down the political line. So my question will be, how well are the charges uh, substantiated, actually? Because, of course, we're looking at a very polarizing issue. Let's turn our attention to the facts and when it comes to these particular charges. Well, we have few particular charges which were very detailed. So we have uh, charges against asset purchase program and actually not the asset purchase program itself because that's what the central banks are doing around the world, but, but some details uh, how it was uh, done at the very beginning uh, when the COVID recession started in 2020. There are also allegations about uh, foreign exchange intervention at the end of 2021, which was uh, performed exactly on the last day of the fiscal year to increase artificially uh, the central bank uh, profits, which then were transmitted to the government. Uh, so uh, there were serious allegations that the central bank might have been involved in some politics. Obviously, some of them are will be hard to prove, as mentioned before on the on the screen the allegations about interest rates cuts before elections where that was the decision of the monetary policy council not the central bank chief itself so for me like it will be almost impossible to prove that that was adam glapinski involved in that that was the decision of the whole council and obviously there are some minor charges against him and how he are performing his duty as a head of the monetary policy council we heard some information from other monetary monetary policy members that uh, they worked uh, has been much harder during Glapinski's stance and their access to some documents were limited. So which of these charges would you say would be the most likely to make an impact? I'm not just saying, you know, among the general public, because the general public is likely to completely ignore the more sophisticated, complicated things and focus on things like perhaps nepotism, perhaps basically awarding bonuses to himself because it never looks good, right? But what about the strictly economic issues? You've already mentioned the burden of proof could be difficult. But is there any one particular thing that you'd say is likely to stick and is likely to go beyond mere speculations and possibly uh, leading to some sort of uh, conviction here. If we can call it like that, of course, because it is not a judicial, judicial body per se. It's uh, mm, a different kind of process, but nevertheless, an equivalent of one. Uh, to be honest, I don't know because I'm not a, I'm a part of the central bank, but obviously some allegations around the asset purchase program and how, how it was done at the beginning whether it should have been done by uh, the board of the central bank but and the monetary policy council there is a big disagreement uh, within the central bank who should have made that decision but uh, obviously it relates to uh, interpretation of the polish law but also central bank's internal procedures so i think uh, the asset purchase program especially the beginning of it in 2020 
will be the most important part politically, obviously, but, but because from the market point of view, the economic point of view, I don't think this is a major issue. Foreign investors are like aware of this and they are buying, buying Polish lottery, they are buying Polish assets. I think it's more of the local, uh, local stuff than something that might influence uh, our uh, Polish uh, view from abroad from the foreign investors. All right. I would also like to draw our attention to uh, what uh, Mr. Klepinski said that uh, this he sees this as, as an attack on the uh, central bank's independence. What's your opinion on that? Well, I think that allegations, some of them, are serious, and uh, the new ruling coalition, the government, has the right to check whether uh, they are right or not. And uh, I think I don't see it as an attack on the central bank. Uh, there are serious allegations that needs to be uh, checked whether uh, those procedures which should be in place have been applied. And would you say that the current situation could impact the confidence among investors in any way? This is another thing that the current authorities within the National Bank of Poland are saying essentially don't get it started because the investors are going to be turned off by this. They are not going to accept this sort of thing going. Is there anything you know, any substantial, any substance about this particular uh, suggestion? I don't think so. This is not the new information. It's, it been, it's been around for a couple of months already. And what we actually are seeing is record for a direct, foreign and direct investments into Poland. We see capital flying in, very strong Polish lottery. Uh, the stock exchange market is doing well. So I think the foreign investors are aware of this thing which is happening. They also see it mostly as a local stuff, uh, like a political, uh, political matters, and they, it, 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 don't influence, it doesn't influence how they see the long-term performance of the Polish economy. So uh, uh, that's, that's what I see. Right, and some people are calling this uh, a symptomatic of what some describe as state capture of public institution done by the previous government. Do you think that is founded? No, I don't think so. As, as I said, the allegations, some of them are serious. They're, they need to be checked. For example, exactly that, that the foreign exchange intervention uh, of the last days of 2021, who made that decision? Because from, like, from this point of time, it's visible that it was are done for the purpose of increasing the central bank profit artificially. So uh, those are serious allegations which needs which needs to be which needs to be checked. And I don't think it's um, too much involvement of the new government to to check those things because actually how how are they supposed to do it? Because the central bank is an independent authority, and they can't really go there and check whether all the procedures were checked and in place where those operations were made on the market. So Mikołaj Raczyński there with details on this intricate but a very important case which is unfolding right before our eyes and there will be plenty of updates to that because it's only just beginning, right? So thank you very much for joining us and for sharing your expertise here on TVP World.